This is uh, Morten from Inkish. Uh, a very warm welcome to Marco from Delford. Um, welcome, Marco. Ah, oh, hello, Morten. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's speak it, to you on your channel. I love uh, your channel. It's wonderful it's really to meet you, and I think we had a good fun before we turned on the recording. And let yeah. me just repeat one of them: uh, you work in the paper industry, and you made a thesis uh, when you started on the paperless office. Where is the combination? <laughs> Ah, I noticed during my thesis that you can't do without paper, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, when you did a thesis about the paperless office, I think that a lot of people, especially when the internet came around and, you know, really got populated around 2007 and, and, and that was like where it became like a really mainstream kind of communication way yeah. uh, and I think yeah, Microsoft uh, Bill Gates and a lot of uh, influencers in the world at the time they thought that okay now it is the end of paper at least in the office space but I think today most people realize that it's probably more paper than ever right um, yeah well, it's, it's going back and forth I would say uh, it's um, I think uh, during uh, the the corona I know everybody was at home and so on then really pop, the people started to you know uh, leave the paper and just keep it digital uh, yeah. definitely yeah. yeah but there are other things we have to say they have to stay on a printed medium yeah yeah definitely. and um and now you work with delford maybe you can talk a little bit about who you are and, and what delford yeah. is yeah um well i've been now with delford for over 20 years now oh really yeah. okay so, and yeah, you look yeah. so young my friend <laughs> yeah i started as a trainee yeah <laughs> so um and uh, then I started really to take care about the thin print paper market uh, in the Dach region, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Yeah, and uh, in this position also, I accompanied uh, many trials of our customers on our thin, low basis weight paper on high speed inkjet presses. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So from the very start, yeah, so. Um, you can call me a, a witness and co-creator of this fantastic development yeah, this technology made over the last years. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, when I look at your website, it seems that uh, I think it's a very fresh approach because you also uh, emphasize that you want to be a little bit different. Uh, uh, the, the product offerings you have is also quite wide. It seems from like food packaging to... Uh, yeah to uh, almost anything kind of paper. So can you just uh, narrow down what, what uh, the products you offer are, are? I mean, what is the idea uh, for the products that you offer? Yeah, perhaps I can a little bit explain, because we are newbie, you know, so at Hunkula Innovation Days, uh, explain who we are really. Mm -hmm. So um, Delford is a family owned mm -hmm. uh, paper and paper converting company. We have six paper mills and wow. seven paper converting uh, plants. Uh, 3,200 employees we have. And our really strong focus is um, we produce uh, wood-free, very low substance thin paper, mm -hmm. yeah? specialty paper. Mm -hmm. So our lowest substance we produce is 10 GSM. Really? Wow. Yeah, but not for the graphical industry. No, no, I was yeah, just yeah, thinking about that was like too thin, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, that's, uh, well, no, especially not in Ninja. No, but in the, for the graphical paper industry, we start with a, a 25 GSM uncoated paper. Which is still a very, very thin paper, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and it coated, we start from 29 GSM, so also very thin. Yeah. And with Ninja treated paper, we start with 36 GSM. Okay, and when you start with the with the 36 on the, on the inkjet treated paper, is that simply because the presses are uh, not suitable for thinner paper and then you just figure that is the good uh, minimum kind of uh, grammage for, for inkjet or or is that just because that is where the treatments make sense? Um, it's so that, you know, uh, 20 years ago when we started, you know, the high-speed inkjet presses uh, were on um, still working with dye ink. And at that time, uh, 16 years ago, we developed this uh, inkjet treated paper, thin jet, mm -hmm. thin jet silk, yeah, 36 GSM. 
Yeah, so that was the solution. That time you couldn't do it. But now I really have to make big compliments to the machine manufacturers and also the ink developers, uh, toner developers. They made really a fantastic progress yeah, in this technology. And today you can print on our standard offset uh, grades uh, in high-speed inkjet and reach offset-like quality. Mm, fantastic. For most applications, if you really have a, a high ink coverage or you have uh, elsewise demanding, uh, you know, necessities for your printing project, then we recommend the uh, the inkjet treated paper. Mm. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah, I it's... just want to give you an example. Yeah. Sorry, Martin. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one customer who's printing on our standard offset um, 36 GSM law books mm -hmm. yeah, on high-speed inkjet presses. So this technology has really come that far. Mm. If I remember uh, six, 17 years ago, on a 40 GSM with dye ink, yeah, the ink just went through the paper. <laughs> I can imagine, <laughs> so, yeah. And I was, yeah. I was thinking because, I mean... Um, I think that what you what you are specialized in is in in uh, I think in broad terms called uh, thin paper. Um, is that is I mean is, that is not such a competitive area, is it? I mean it's like uh, I mean when you look at the the paper merchants and the paper mills in general, it seems that they have other optimums. Have you simply specialized in this area because you have a a a market that is uh, specified in? In this segment, or, or or how come is it in in this type, or is it just how yeah. machines and and history has uh, turned you to, to 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 become what you are? Yeah, well, it's, uh, well we have uh, big plans, and I can tell you what what is really unique about Delfoot. Yeah, we invested in 2020 into a brand new graphical paper machine. Mm -hmm. And so that you know, is, that is uh, not so many that does that, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's really, and, and you know, so customers like scratching it, like, are you really investing into a new graphical paper machine? Yeah, because in the news, you only read this paper machine is being closed down. This one is transferred to uh, flexible packaging and so on. Mm. No, no, but uh, we have a well worked out plan and uh, uh, it's, this investment is just too expensive just to follow up a trial and error strategy, you know, it's just, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. long term thing. And I was just thinking that yeah. being a private uh, health company, I, I take that it gives you a little, bit, a little bit more patience in the investment, because if you have yes. enough money and you have a good yeah. plan, then you also know that it takes years before you yeah. you have a positive result on, on that investment. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, just I just want to ask you once again, just to understand. So the thin paper uh, market that you operate in for the graphics industry from from the 25 to the 36 uh, 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 grams, very thin paper, is, is are you pretty unique in the market or you have a lot of competition here? No, um, I can sort of know my special um, application, what I'm working for is mm -hmm. the uh, pharmaceutical leaflets or patient uh, information. Of leaflets. course, yeah, because I was yeah. thinking Bibles, but of course the pharmaceutical uh, yeah. inserts, of course, need to be on thin paper as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and then it, I can tell you, I, I lost 15 competitors over the last 15 years. No? So okay. the market has been from very small. But um, uh, we, of course, have also another idea with this machine. No? So now our, our range is 25 to 74 GSM now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? And I think I have to you know, go back a bit how now what we are doing with the paper. No? So our paper is always being used for uh, printing projects that require a thin and low basis weight paper. Mm -hmm. yeah? And what we always focused on was to have a good, what we call printed opacity. Yeah. Which means yeah, the ink should stay on the top layer of the paper and shouldn't penetrate deep into the paper and not through the paper. Yeah. Yeah. For example, if you, if you uh, read a um, don't know, Bible on the first page, you want to read the first page, not the and second, not the second and the third, page. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Or if you read a, a patient information leaflet, the three shouldn't look like an eight because the ink from the other side goes through. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is uh, basically uh, what we always focus on. So and we started, of course, with offset. Yeah. The, the our um, research and development focus on the offset printing mm -hmm. method, and then high speed inkjet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, our technology was already a really good start, and we optimized the paper. And uh, yeah, now we're there that uh, we can also offer this um, printed opacity um, feature property also um, for the high-speed inkjet. Mm. And now coming back to your uh, question, um, we're not really looking 
now to the traditional thin print paper um, uh, uses. Okay. But um, it also gives a great opportunity for users of higher substances mm -hmm. to lower their carbon footprint. I mean, we are all obligated at the moment to lower our carbon footprint. And today, an easy and efficient way is really to uh, lower the substance of your paper. Mm. And this really, um, the, the percentage of lowering the substance, uh, as a rule of thumb, correlates one, by, one to one mm -hmm. to the percentage of the carbon footprint you are lowering. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you go from 80 to 60 GSM, mm -hmm. Yeah, you will have a 25% lower substance. Mm -hmm. This means you are lowering your carbon footprint by 25% throughout the entire supply chain. So Fantastic. from the forest to the end user. And, and th th now, sorry, the good thing is with our paper, you don't have to uh, sacrifice the printed quality. Mm. Yeah, because we have this special technology on all and 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 uh, marco um, uh, what i yes. what i hear you say and maybe i'm i'm wrong but you, then you can correct me is um, um i don't know if you recall but i mean i think when i was back in the in the offset business uh, 20 years ago yeah. uh, the posted rates in in scandinavia uh, grow a lot so we thought that okay if we can find a lower grammage with a higher bulk or yeah, a good uh, opacity, then we could basically substitute that paper. Are you saying that revolution is now kind of repeating itself, but now it with with a sustainable sustainability footprint? Uh, because I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, maybe not in the in the right context, but I fly a lot, and and when yeah. I I see the few uh, airline magazines uh, that you still see. Uh, I can see, especially the German one, have have got like into grayer paper, uh, thinner substrate, and it doesn't yeah. look so great. So, so I take that what you say is basically if you can have the, a high quality white paper on a lower grammage, uh, then you get the best of the 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 best of all the all the uh, lower yeah. weight, uh, lower carbon footprint, and still a high print quality. Is that what I hear? Yes, yes. And uh, our paper is wood free. You know, the, the, the magazine you're talking of is always recycling wood yeah. content. Yeah. Also, I mean, it is, uh, it is fit for purpose, no? Yeah. Always yeah, yeah. the paper. Yeah. yeah. But, um, wood free has a really, is bright, um, age resistant, um, for those applications. Yes. And, and, uh, and with the a 74 gram, um, uh, paper, yeah. uh, I easily see this also as uh, something that you could potentially use for like uh, uh, web offset high print run uh, magazines yeah. uh, because I mean basically uh, I think that as you say the the recycled paper that you see on low grammage in, in for example the airline magazine and also in some uh, uh, magazines uh, throughout Europe is simply I would say in a quality where it doesn't really encourage to make really nice designs because basically you don't have the the, the even surfaces of the paper. You don't have a really high um, uh, ink coverage because it cannot yeah. carry it. So, uh, so yeah. Delford, when you when you think about the new machine, is it up and running yet, or is it still in production uh, development? No. Uh, it's been running now for two years. Okay. It, it was a bit delayed because we had to, you know, build it up during Corona. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So, and you have the donations from everywhere. So, the guys from Italy came to the Czech Republic where the paper machine is, they had to go five days into quarantine, work for two days, go back, five days quarantine. Well, that was a bit of a challenge, yeah? Um, no, but uh, what you're talking about recycled paper, yeah, I mean, um, no, it's a nice coexistence. No? Recycling paper also has really, it's good for our, um, you know, our uh, drive to come to a net zero standard. It yeah, depends yeah. actually a little bit because I spoke to uh, uh, Casper Larsen from a, a pure yeah. print, a part of the uh, of the pure print group, and basically they say that the problem with recycled paper is that it's a little bit more difficult to basically say exactly the ingredients of it. So sometimes virgin yeah. is actually much more sustainable because you can verify uh, the the ingredients and you can verify the sources and things like that. So I, 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 I'm just saying it because we, I have a particular interest in, in the sustainability agenda because we're doing a conference about it. So I have just tried to read up on it. So but but your company is entirely focusing on on uh, on fresh fibers, or you also do recycling? Okay. 
Yeah, no, no, we, we only do a uh, fresh fiber. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I also uh, talked to uh, a paper manufacturer for a second paper. I know they at the moment have a problem to have good uh, fresh fibers from the recycling containers. No? So at the moment, if you look in the recycling bin, it's full of Amazon cartons. Yeah, and not white paper. Um, what is good about our, now this technology, what we have you know, with the printed opacity, I just spoke with an offset printer mm -hmm. and it changed from uh, one thin print to our thin print. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he said like uh, his uh, ink consumption mm -hmm. decreased from 950 kilograms to 650 kilograms. So this special printed opacity means, you know, to reach the same uh, printed density, yeah, you need less ink because yes. the ink doesn't disappear in the body of the paper. Yeah, fantastic. And this then finally means also that, uh, no, the, the um, recycled paper in the end has a better quality, yeah, because there's less ink in. So this is also, this is a side effect. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. What can uh, people expect from uh, Delfort at uh, Innovation Days? Come to our booth. What, what we have is we have a lot of printed samples uh, on different inkjet machines. Mm -hmm. So uh, one promised also to um, hand me over some 29 GSM. Oh. Did you need printed? Coated. Oh, coated. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, printed on a toner based machine. Um, yeah. We have samples starting from then 29 GSM to 74. Um, and uh, we are there. So if people have questions, if they, you know, we, Nice thing is, I think this uh, this year the Uncle Innovation Days will explode because you no, know, I'm traveling so. and I'm seeing a lot of customers, and they will say, "Yes, I'm going. Yes, I'm going." Yeah. Yeah. They weren't there five years ago. And I think so, we are, and I think we are all doing our best to uh, to encourage people to go. I mean, uh, this is purely yeah. editorial work from our side because we really would like people yeah. to get to to Innovation Days, and I think that. Uh, as you said, also with the with the two times postponed innovation days and and uh, not even yeah. a very very big trade show in Germany for almost eight years now, uh, mm -hmm. basically there is a need to go and see and and I would say that we are the, in the middle of a digital transformation where you know going from analog print to digital print is probably closer than ever, right? So uh, yeah. of course it's very interesting to see both the technology, but I mean the substrates and and the papers that you are. Uh, 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 presenting it to me, it just sounds like fantastic. So uh, I can't wait to meet you and and your team yes. and see the samples in uh, Lucerne. And uh, Marco, it's in just like three weeks from now, so uh, two yeah. and a half weeks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. so are you looking forward to go? Yeah, I'm really looking forward. Yeah, so fantastic. I just really? want to say uh, thank you very much for your time here on uh, Inkish. I hope you enjoyed. You said you were nervous. You, I don't think you came out nervous, so uh, I think you were very good at explaining Delfort's uh, qualities and capabilities, and I think you have a uh, well-deserved place in the thin paper world, so <laughs> great, to, uh, great to talk to you. Oh, well, great talk to you, Martin, and thank you, and uh, looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> Likewise. Take care. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Good. Bye. Thank you. Bye.